The economy continues to be an issue in Niagara. Where have the jobs gone? Will they come back? What are we going to do? We're going to talk about that in this episode of the show. My guest today is David Alexander, who is the Executive Director of the Niagara Workforce Planning Board. David, welcome. Good morning. Now, you see this close up. You see what's happening in Niagara. What is going on? There's a whole number of things that are going on, and we are in a process of change. And I think one of the things that we need to do is define the direction about where we want to go. The Workforce Planning Board is part of our strategic plan. We've developed a benchmarking study that measures Niagara against other regions. However, we need to be able to set objectives and uh, collectively as one Niagara, as a whole community of interested stakeholders, we need to define what the, the, the outcome is going to be. It's a little bit uh, difficult to believe that after all these years of regional government, we are still talking about working together. How, why will this work this time when it hasn't worked in the past? Well, I think given the changes that we've seen globally since 2008 with the recession, that the message really does hit home that we are in a significant transition. This is something that we have seen significant uh, job losses within the manufacturing sector, that our manufacturing sector, which was a, a traditional strength of Niagara, kind of our big secret, we, we were a powerhouse in, in manufacturing. We are also strong in tourism and agriculture, but what we need to do is recreate the manufacturing sector for a global world. And there are some companies and examples of uh, and people doing that and providing leadership, but we need to create the framework that enables more of that to happen, especially for our young people. And creating that framework, Dave, is that a matter of the municipalities working together? It does, and it doesn't really mean that we have to merge municipalities or create one Niagara government. It needs to be the conversation about what our options are in going forward. And that making the best strategic and business choice, a community choice to make sure that people are included in the information, that people uh, have a voice and that we all can make this transition together. Because people do, regardless of their economic stature, want to participate in the next uh, generation of, of what happens in Niagara, especially our young people. Do you have any idea what our unemployment rate is now, roughly? Well, you know, there are some true numbers that, that you can go to our website and we report on those, you know, somewhere between 7 and 8 percent. However, that might not be a true reflection of what the unemployment rates really are because you've got people moving in and out of the economy. There's a, a number of people that have wanting to do a job search or have done a job search and they've given up. They might, they might be focusing on some volunteer pursuits or taking care of their kids or looking after other things. And that those statistics aren't really reflected in the, in the numbers. And so one of the things we're committing to do this year as part of our benchmarking work is to dig into what those numbers truly are for Niagara. So that, because if we don't really know what the information is, we can't make the good decisions that are required. One of the challenges for Niagara is our young people tend to leave. What can we do about that? What we need to do is make sure we reach out to young people early on in their education to put those uh, ideas in their heads to make sure that Niagara always remains an option for people to come back. We want people to go out and explore the world and, and, and learn and grow as, as people. But we also want people to come back. We also want to do a better job of attracting people to work here, which also means to the people that are here, we need to do a better job of creating those opportunities for people to stay and learn and grow and Dave develop. what comes to mind first when I ask the question of a young male or female 22 years old maybe graduated from college or university and they can't find a job what should they be aware of well they should be really focused in on the skill sets that their their, their gifts or their their the, the, the what they've learned and then how to apply it and you're young you're mobile you're, you you you're going to be looking at a number of options and what Niagara needs to do is engage those people who want to stay and participate in the local economy. The, one of the key things that we also need to, to hammer the message home is, is that it's not just about a job, it's about work. That the, an opportunity is there for people who are dynamic and motivated and want to start a business, that we need to do a better job of incubating these young ideas because those are going to be the employers of the future. David, uh, last week the provincial government received the report from the economist Don Drummond. Any way you cut it, he's looking at very substantial cuts. When you analyze that document, what does it mean for the region? Well, in pawing through the document, there's a whole number of issues, and I think he was asked to be broad in scope, to be able to provide essentially the options paper for the government uh, and Queen's Park for moving forward. 
we have to make sure that we are, are looking at a, the broad suite of options. And I think that for Niagara, we want to be able to work with Queen's Park. And then the same message goes for But what does it mean uh, for Niagara? Ottawa. But for Niagara, well, yeah, but for Niagara, what we need to do is drill down into creating our own plan. One of the things that a recommendation that came out in the Drummond Report is that the workforce planning boards should be uh, sending out a, a stronger message to employers to look at workplace-based training. So that includes apprenticeships, trades, co-ops, and, and, and a number of, of things. And that integrates the, the applied learning within the school system uh, and into the workplace. And so that, that's a message that we've been working on diligently, but in a way it, makes, it shines a lot more light on this as an opportunity. And then one of the things that the Drummond Report also is looking at is, is uh, full day kindergarten. Uh, and, and so that's gonna be a tough choice for, for uh, people in Queens Park. And again, it's something that we wanna make sure that these kinds of decisions increase over the long term, our productivity and our, comp our competitiveness. So that's something that I think as an outcome, we, we need to be able to measure that. And so as we implement those policy decisions that we're going to uh, be able to support the, the, that going forward. He's also talking about reducing spending to universities and colleges. He's talking, in essence, uh, the feds have already cut back on digital technology investment, which is something this region has invested in. Mm -hmm. So if we, if we look at Drummond and then we look at the current political climate, Will we see a meaningful change in the improvement of the economy over the next two or three years, in your view? I think one of the things we need to do is, is look at Niagara relative to changes in other communities. I think overall for Ontario, for Canada, for North America, we can see some of the big numbers. However, for Niagara, because of our situation that we have right now, we need to be bold and innovative and we need to make sure that we, we look at sectors of the economy, specific sectors of the economy that we can be extremely good at and base primary and secondary industries on that. Things like software development in tourism or agriculture, high technology, uh, the, the information that's coming out of the Vineland Innovation and Research Center, uh, you know, so that we, we can create those high value added jobs because that's really what's carried us forward to just the recent past. However, we're, I, th I believe we're in somewhat of an unprecedented, unprecedented times, but we have a significant opportunity here to make some uh, strides in going forward. Great. Dave, thanks for coming. We'll have you back shortly. You're welcome. All right. So uh, give us your ideas, send an email. I'd love to get your comments, and I'll see you very soon.